Hey guys, I'm Philip Bloom and I want to talk to you today about creating a photography studio that has the wherewithal to last for the decades. I want to talk to you about creating a business that doesn't burn you out. This is um, the anniversary of Bloom Photography. My wife Eileen's in my uh, first business and studio. Uh, Bloom Photography we created 10 years ago. Um, and now going on more than a decade, there's a number of things we've learned from ourselves, friends, others, um, who we've seen do things right and wrong. They can keep your business going strong. So not only starting up strong, not only getting that sprint out of the gate, but pl playing that long game. And we find that the best creative business people, whether it's photographers or authors, artists who we've come to know over the years, um, they all have this mentality of, of running their business like a marathon. Um, so let's talk about three points. First, I want to talk about some of those hiccups in the road at the beginning and how you can avoid those. Um, I want to talk about creating a brand that is valued in your community. Uh, so it's, it's got that sticking spot in your community that um, people keep it running for you. Let's just start with talking about uh, beginner missteps. So one of the first things, one of the biggest mistakes we see is, is people setting their business up um, in a way that will lead very quickly to burnout. And I know that's usually not the first thing you think about when starting a business or early in your business. You think, I'm gonna keep going, I'm gonna keep hustling until I'm just exhausted and then I'll worry about burnout, then I'll figure out how to correct it. But it's actually something you wanna think about early in the game. So I want you to think about when you're building your business habits, when everything's fresh. Remember, you own your business, you get to set the rules. So I'd recommend setting boundaries for yourself. Yes, there's gonna be some long nights here and there. There's going to be a lot of heavy lifting and learning when you're first starting a business up. Um, but overall, I want you to set some boundaries. What, what Eileen and I have done, some of the things that have worked best for us, especially with three kids, homeschooled, and other things that are important to us beyond our business, charities and our church and our community, um, is to set our business hours. So if you're a morning person or an evening, a night owl, set this for yourself. But for us, we usually roll out of bed a little bit and spend some time with our kids. Um, and at this point in our lives, that's valuable to us. So we might work from uh, you know, 10 to five or something each day and, and really set those strict business hours. After five, we're closing up shop. If someone calls, they can leave a voicemail. If there's an email, we'll get to it at a certain time in the morning when we're gonna answer emails. So that is fantastic. Just avoid burnout. Um, you know, here we are on vacation. You don't want a business that controls you. You want to be in control of your business. Um, so as much as you can, um, I know we're all searching for that freedom as entrepreneurs, but we've also all heard that cliche of, you know, entrepreneurs are people who will work 80 hours a week to avoid working 40 hours a week. There will be some weeks like that, but as a rule, I want you to set those boundaries. Um, one of the best things you can do is when it comes to your social media and your email, like I mentioned, um, just choose a time in the day when you're going to answer those um, and get it done instead of having this uh, divided mind that keeps going back to, I wonder if someone replied, I wonder if someone commented, um, just set those times and you'll be fine. So the next thing is, is avoiding, you know, not just burnout personally, but big mistakes that can send businesses tumbling under uh, too early. Some of those things that can cause your business to tumble uh, out of control are things like lost memory cards, not backing up your hard disks. These are things kind of like death, right? Nobody, th we're, we all feel immortal. We're not, we're not preparing really to die. We just expect to go on living and so we don't always plan for the future. How many of us have our wills signed? The same thing with our businesses. Um, I can tell you, if you want your business to let, live in the long term, it's not a question of if, but when will you have a computer drive failure? And we've had several um, over the years. Yours might come year one of your business. And that's what we've seen, unfortunately, with friends who were, you know, could have just been meteors in our industry, um, but because of bad reputation related to lost wedding images and that sort of thing, um, just tumbled uh, in, into obscurity. So I'd recommend getting a Drobo or some kind of a RAID backup system um, that is multiple hard disks backing up your images. So if your computer fails, if even one of those disks in your RAID system fail, then the others all have it duplicated out and you can always go back. If it wasn't for that, there have been times where we lost everything on our computer, wedding videos, wedding images, and we had to go back 
to that for our salvation. So have that in place right away. And of course we can talk, you can find blog posts we've done and things like that about what our system looks like and how you can build that. Um, do it right now. Building vision and relationships in your community. Guys, when it comes to building your business um, for uh, a, a reputation that can last for a decade and longer, um, there's a lot of things that can distract your attention. You want to build your business quickly and so you're kind of sprinting on social media, you're trying to gain a million followers and you don't really, the math's a little fuzzy of how many of those followers will actually convert to clients or how much money will that really bring to my business. Guys, social media is fine. If you want to do those things, do them efficiently. Um, use a program like Buffer or uh, Hootsuite to sort of plan your social media so you're not always on it wasting your time. It's one of the biggest time sucks. But that's not where I would put all my eggs in that basket. Um, do old school. Get out there face to face. You know, if you shoot babies, meet those who are in business selling, you know, at a baby boutique. Something higher end, something that you want to associate your brand with. So when people think of you, they think of that high end brand. When they think of that brand, they start thinking of you. And what has worked wonderfully for us is um, gift certificates that we share with um, businesses in our community that align with our business. So whether it's we want to do headshots and so we give free gift certificates to orthodontists who um, then send their patients with the perfect smiles to us. Um, or if we're donating to charities in our community that we believe in. So we're helping the community as well as bringing in new clients um, who are also uh, who also believe in those charities. And what we're doing is we're aligning our vision. And so if you do that from the beginning of your business, that's where you start meeting the movers and shakers in your community. Um, you meet them at these charity events. You meet them through local businesses who are already established. Don't just try to do it on social media because you feel like you have this network through the world. It's amazing what we can do online, but where a lasting long-term business is going to really take shape is in your community and on the local level. I hope those tips help you. Um, I just want you to be local, be involved in your community. Uh, we're gonna, uh, from the beginning, avoid burnout by giving yourself structure, giving yourself boundaries, um, and just be all in with safety. Really, you don't have to splurge and break the bank on gear. I would spend it first on keeping your business safe and professional. Use some of those things and you will live well beyond that five-year mark, that 10-year mark where the vast majority of photographers fail. Um, set up something that lasts for a long time and we wish you the best. Have a good summer, guys.